Korea has conducted a missile drill hitting targets in the East Sea, designed to be the same distance away as North Korea's nuclear test site. The drill, held before the crack of dawn on Monday, was in response to North Korea's sixth nuclear test a day earlier. Now then to Washington's response to North Korea's most powerful nuclear test to date. President Trump had some typically strong words for the regime, calling it hostile and dangerous to the United States. Further warnings did follow with President Trump's defense chief saying that any threat to the U.S. and its allies will be met with a massive military response. Kim Hyo-sun reports. U.S. President Donald Trump took to Twitter to condemn North Korea, calling the regime very hostile and dangerous to the United States. In a pair of tweets after the North claimed it had successfully tested a hydrogen bomb, Trump also described North Korea a rogue nation, which has become a great threat and embarrassment to China. He also took aim at South Korea, stating that appeasement with North Korea will not work, and suggesting that more severe steps must be taken to influence the Kim Jong-un regime. Pentagon Chief James Mattis also warned Pyongyang that any threat to the U.S. or its allies will be met with an overwhelming response. Well, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We had a small group uh, national security meeting today with the president and the vice president uh, about uh, the latest provocation on the Korean Peninsula. Uh, we have many military options, and the president wanted to be briefed on each one of them. Uh, we made clear that we have the ability to defend ourselves and our allies, South Korea and Japan. Uh, from any attack and our commitments among the allies are ironclad. Uh, any threat to the United States or its territories, including Guam, uh, or our allies will be met with a massive military response, a response both effective and overwhelming. King Jong-un should take heed of the United Nations Security Council's unified voice. All members unanimously agreed on the threat North Korea poses and they remain unanimous in their commitment to the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Because we are not looking to the total annihilation of a country, namely North Korea. But as I said, we have many options to do so. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Mattis was speaking after an emergency national security meeting with President Trump and other top administration officials. Looking to constrict North Korea's activities, U.S. Treasury Secretary Steve Munishin said Washington will consider cutting off all trade with individuals and agencies that do business with Pyongyang. Speaking on Fox News on Sunday, Munishin said a new package of sanctions will be laid out in order to economically isolate North Korea. The South Korean military gave its own response to Pyongyang's sixth nuclear test by firing off a ballistic missile and air-to-ground missiles. The simulated target was North Korea's Punggye nuclear test site. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff says the drills were aimed at warning the regime for its latest nuclear provocation. The military fired a land-based Hongmu 2A ballistic missile, which has a range of 300 kilometers, and a SLAM ER missile from an F-15K fighter jet. Officials say all the missiles accurately hit their designated targets. The Joint Chiefs of Staff say the drills were conducted against a target in the EC. The range to the simulated targets was set in consideration of the North's nuclear test site in its northeastern province. Officials added that the drill shows Seoul has the capability to target the origin of an attack and key enemy facilities in a time of crisis on the Korean Peninsula. Seoul and Washington are also planning to hold a combined military exercise in the next few days to jointly respond to the recent nuke test. North Korea conducted its sixth and most powerful nuclear test to date on Sunday. Experts say it was six times stronger than the fifth test and 11 times more powerful than the fourth. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. The UN Security Council will hold an emergency meeting later today to discuss their options following North Korea's latest act of defiance. Council members are likely to discuss the broadening of sanctions on the regime on top of measures adopted just last month, already considered the toughest measures ever imposed on Pyongyang. So let's get an expert's take on the current situation following North Korea's biggest nuclear test to date. I am joined now by Bong Yong Shik, research fellow at Yonsei University's Institute for North Korean uh, Studies. Professor Bong, thanks for coming in. Good morning. Uh, so first of all, in your mind, what is North Korea trying to achieve here? Is it solely about ensuring its survival or is there something else going on uh, as well? 
Well, in the eyes of North Korea, those two goals are not separable, um, possessing uh, nuclear capability and fire and attack uh, United States and other countries at will with its ICBMs mounted with a nuclear warhead is the only assurance North Korea can get in order to maintain its survival. So those two uh, purposes are interlinked. Okay, and uh, just put it into context for us then. Uh, how uh, big of a deal is this particular nuclear test, the sixth by the regime? There's still some doubt about whether it was actually a hydrogen bomb, as Pyongyang has claimed. Uh, but it still seems like this is a serious uh, technological step forward. It's a significant uh, uh, technological step forward. There's no question about it. But if I may uh, give you a good news first, then this is not a classical H-bomb, hydrogen bomb, that the United States Soviet Union uh, invented in 1950s, which has the, uh, about a thousand times bigger explosive power than regular atomic bombs. But according to the own estimate by the Korean government, then the explosion in the sixth most recent nuclear test by North Korea is uh, uh, five, at least five times bigger than the explosion uh, in the uh, fifth nuclear test. So now you're dealing with about 10 times more powerful atomic bombs uh, that were dropped uh, in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And another uh, reason for concern, especially for South Korea, is that you can say that, oh, North Korea has not mastered the uh, re-entry uh, technology or, the, or the, uh, the miniaturization of nuclear warhead to be topped on the ICBMs uh, with a long range. But no North Korea can just uh, uh, instantly uh, mount a nuclear warhead on Nodong missiles, mm -hmm. uh, which can you know, attack South Korea and Japan. South Korea and Japan are already within the range of nuclear attacks by North Korea. It's an extremely dangerous situation. Uh, but let's take a look at the international reaction. President Trump has been using some typically strong uh, language. He said uh, just a few hours ago, we'll see if the U.S. attacks mm -hmm. uh, North Korea. He said uh, fire and fury, locked and loaded, mm -hmm. and uh, even accused uh, South Korea of appeasing Pyongyang on Twitter the other day as well. What do you think this all means? And also, as a sub-question to that, do you think the Trump administration has a clear and defined North Korea strategy? Um, answering your second question first, no. The Trump administration doesn't seem to have a very clearly thought out and tailor made a North Korea strategy, uh, considering all these uh, haphazard and confusing remarks by President himself and uh, uh, major members in the cabinet in charge of foreign policy and uh, national security, which gives a very mixed signals uh, to uh, its allies and uh, North Korea as well. So North Korea um, you know, must have thought that you know, all these uh, uh, flamboyant rhetorics of uh, fury and fire, uh, lock and loaded, are basically pompous and empty threats. And South Korean government made it clear that it will do uh, everything in its power to you know, stop uh, the uh, possible occurrence of another Korean war on the peninsula. So. Uh, the, very, the very premise of the uh, North Korea policy by uh, Trump administ administration, the maximum pressure and maximum engagement um, is not viable in the eyes of North Koreans because uh, when military actions are not really on the table, all options are on the table, but some options are not available. Mm. So North Koreans do not have any reason to be afraid of you know, United States and South Korea jointly take military actions. That's not, on, that's not in the cards. So North Korea goes, uh, goes ahead with more ICBM and nuclear tests. Uh, in regards to South Korea's response, President Moon Jae-in finds himself in a pretty uh, tough spot at the moment. This is not a good, good season uh, to be uh, president <laughs> in South Korea. Yeah, that's right. But uh, he said that this latest nuclear test is going to further isolate North Korea. But how do you further isolate the biggest outcast in, th in the world? Right, right. This monk is already on a, a strict diet, right? Yeah. Um, so that, that show, reveals a very sad, harsh reality that South Korea has to deal with. South Korea, unfortunately, does not have independent capability to you know, initiate major change of behavior on the part of North Korea. So rather than trying to be on the driver's seat, when South Korea does not have the car key to drive, South Korea needs to take time uh, to build its own um, strategic asset and political influence uh, to set the agenda that will be satisfactory to all parties involved. And uh, finally, we are unfortunately running out of time, but uh, we know it's hard to predict what North Korea 
will do next, but we'd like to know, in your opinion, what you think might happen in the coming uh, weeks and months. Do you think we're going to see more provocations, another ICBM test, another nuclear test, or do you think this uh, nuclear test was the last in a, a, a series of big provocations that the uh, regime in Pyongyang will use as a kind of bargaining chip? Now, look, we need negotiations, direct negotiations with the United States. On this nice uh, Monday morning, I have to leave you with the bad news. North Korea will continue all the provocations and continue to test ICBMs and nuclear weapons because North Korea will only agree uh, to have uh, diplomatic talks with Washington after it will have completed its ICBM and nu nuclear weapon development in, in order to you know, uh, negotiate with Washington from the absolute position of strength. And quickly then, you don't foresee any uh, U.S. strike on North Korea at all, military strike? No, that's highly unlikely because the, uh, the uh, flip side is too uh, high. Uh, Washington uh, does not seem to be ready to risk another war after it, uh, uh, after it experienced two wars, uh, one in Iraq and in Afghanistan. But uh, who knows uh, what uh, President Trump is going to do. But now, Washington does not have, have any good option but to continue to... Uh, you know, uh, you know, s propose a, uh, diplomatic talks with Pyongyang. Yeah, well, we hope uh, that uh, obviously we don't see a conflict on the Korean Peninsula and perhaps we can get some movement in the right direction in the coming weeks and months, but it's not looking uh, too great. Uh, we'll have to leave it here for now, though. Professor Bong, thanks for coming in. You're welcome.